Hello everyone, I thought I would give an update on YouTube um, about the ABS problem on my Jag, which I have now fixed. Uh, it was a bit problematic actually, so uh, I was pretty convinced that the controller here um, was faulty, having checked all sorts of other things. Um, I was originally getting some codes back on my little code scanner. Um, I really recommend to buy one of these, this was 30 quid on eBay. And it's actually for uh, for a Volkswagen or Audi, um, uh, which I bought for my wife's Golf. Um, but uh, it will read the codes on the Jag quite happily uh, when you uh, just go to the ODB um, uh, settings. It will eventually find the right uh, protocol to talk to the, uh, the Jag and, and returns codes. Um, I was getting a fault code from this, uh, a C code, which was telling me that the uh, rear left um, uh, sensor was faulty um, and then uh, having tried to sort of check the wiring and, uh, and clean those uh, rear sensors and even swapping one of those rear sensors the, the fault didn't go away um, what happened was that uh, I was just getting on the dashboard the, um, the ABS track uh, not available fault uh, which suggested that this thing here wasn't returning any codes at all, so I was pretty convinced that this thing was dead, um, not working. Um, they do go faulty, um, as I've uh, explained in my other video how to fix this. Um, what you have inside here is the PCB, and you can see here if it will focus. Let's have a go, will it focus there? No, it won't. A bit too close in, there you go. You can see just here, these are the pins for the connector on the back there which is for the, uh, the pump and I believe these little little things go tend to go dry so I resoldered these along with all the other uh, uh, pins on the on the connectors to see if that would fix it and uh, put the uh, other unit back on the car um, I was getting some fault codes for a while and then you know it uh, just kept going uh, track uh, ABS not available so I was I was in the mind that this thing was uh, was a goner uh, so I went and got a spare um, and uh, I fitted that, it cost me, uh, uh, I think I paid 40 quid for that part um, and fitted that and uh, no luck, I was getting all the same problems. So I continued to look into the problem. Uh, I thought firstly I will chase out all the wiring so I took the wheels off one by one on each corner and uh, disconnected the um, the uh, the wires, the connectors from the ABS sensors, from each sensor, and I check the wiring out to the multi-core plug here. You can find on the, on online the wiring diagram for this, and you work out which pin is for which sensor. Uh, to do this, I got a, a nine volt uh, radio battery, and I put some uh, some DC power up uh, the uh, the uh, the cable from the uh, sensor end and then with a little continuity tester here just one of those little screwdriver things with a light on I was able to confirm that each of those circuits was working fine on the um, on the multi-core plug here so so I eliminated any wiring problems from the sensors because that can be an issue sometimes they go faulty in open circuit and can cause all sorts of problems uh, so that was verified um, in doing so at each uh, wheel and removing each wheel um, I took the sensors out from the hubs and cleaned them up. The rears had already done that um, and uh, I swapped over to some new sensors. Um, still it was faulty. So then I moved on to the front um, and the front sensors are, are slightly different uh, to the backs. They sit on the hub and uh, they, uh, they're sort of reading the, uh, the toothed um, uh, sort of uh, gear wheel uh, sort, of, sort of behind if I can describe it like that. Um, when I took those out on the front, uh, I noticed that they were slightly dirty. Um, they sort of picked up rust particles which were sticking to them. So I took those out and gave them a clean with a rag and some WD-40. Um, and also a sort of wire brushed with a fine sort of copper brush. I wire brushed the, uh, the, 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 the cog uh, behind the hub. Um, I put that back. Put it all back together and uh, took it for another test drive and lo and behold the fault cleared and it was working fine and it's been fine ever since so 
I thought I'd share that with you because it can be quite expensive to get this fixed. Um, the unit itself is, is a thousand pounds from JAG if you speak to them. Um, and then of course time and materials on top of that. So this can be a real killer if you don't know what to, you know, if, if you've got this fault coming up. And it is quite common on JAGs, especially if they've been stood for a while. Um, I suppose there's lots of them out there now with uh, sort of uh, uh, front hubs getting, getting a bit rusty. So what I think the problem was here was that the um, the unit would be getting a signal, but a poor signal. So it would it was probably just on the edge of working and not working. I noticed when I would uh, pull away in the car, um, the light would go off. This was after I'd fixed this unit, of course, and fixed the problem on the rear sensor. There was a rear sensor faulty on it. Uh, but when pulling away, uh, it would clear, and then within a minute or two, the fault would come back. So it was a it was a bit intermittent and, and a bit problematic to find. But um, resoldering this thing inside, cleaning all the sensors all around the car, and particularly the fronts, and, and, and giving a good uh, clean up of those um, uh, sort of actuators on the uh, on the front hubs, um, sorted the problem out. So uh, worthwhile having a go. Um, also recommend to buy one of these things. This is really useful, um, one of these. This will tell you whether this thing is returning any fault codes whatsoever, and, uh, and it will do. If it's working and there's a faulty sensor uh, on one of the wheels, it will tell you that, um, that it's not getting a signal uh, or it's open circuit. It will, you, know, you can unplug them and it will return a different C code for each one of those uh, sensors on each corner. So all that uh, remains to do now with this is for me to um, run some silicone around it to make sure there's no moisture ingress. I've been driving on this just with some tape around it now for a couple of weeks. It's been absolutely fine. So I'm convinced now that the uh, ABS is fixed. So I'm going to go and silicone this up with a bead of silicone around it. When that's dry, I'm going to refit that back onto the onto the ABS module there. Um, that block, and a bit tricky to do. You have to sort of unclip the, uh, the brake pipes here and pull them away, which you can do very carefully, not without uh, too much strain. You can just work that uh, box in. Helps if you undo these uh, these earth uh, terminals here from the body. Gives you a bit more space to work. You can just about get that in. Um, certainly an easier job than uh, disconnecting any of this. So you can do this job without actually um, interfering with the, uh, with the hydraulics uh, at all, which is um, you know, much, uh, much easier thing uh, to do. Anyway, so that's enough. I've been talking now for seven and a half minutes. Um, if you've got problems with your ABS, I certainly recommend to have a go with that. Buy yourself one of these things. Uh, I think anything uh, that uh, generally will read ODB codes will do. Um, and you can, uh, you can really work out what's going on with your Jag. So good luck to you all. Hope that's been useful. And uh, that's me signing off. All the best. Bye-bye.